1 november 2010 uh, zitten backstage met Ned Evert, Kofi Baker en Malcolm Bruce. Ned Evert, you just finished. Um, before you went on stage, half of, you kept 30 minutes. Joe Satriani is now on. 30 minutes, isn't it too short for your kind of playing? Oh, for our, yeah, for my style and, and our band, it's 30 minutes is, um, of course, you know, it's an opening spot. You, sometimes you only get 20 minutes, so a 30 or 40 minute set, which we get sometimes, is is actually pretty generous. But for our type of music, we like to expand upon songs, and you know, so yeah, it's pretty short. Are you picking your songs? Um, I mean, that you have, that you can show your different kind of styles. I I know Discovery had a yeah. had a drum solo. I didn't hear a bass solo though, but oh. you, you have to. <laughs> Four bar, basically. Four yeah. bar. Four he bar. can take as long as he likes, though. Really? He I can. can take a bit longer. Yeah. Oh, I think I'll take longer next time. Good. Now I know. But to show off in those 30 minutes. Showcase everybody a little bit, sure. Yeah. <laughs> A fretless player, and then uh, the special part is that you played on a glass neck guitar. Yeah. What brings you to thought, hey, fretless? I can't imagine people play fretless, but you say, why the glass? Why the glass part? You couldn't afford to fret. <laughs> yeah, the, gl oh, the glass part? Yeah. Well, glass is actually cheap to cut, and it's cheaper than cutting a piece of ebony and finishing it off. So, plus, it's glass is really hard. So the guitar strings don't wear it away, whereas wood is soft, and guitar strings, which are nickel steel, will wear it away over time. So it's a little bit of necessity, and plus it looks as good as it sounds. It's environmentally friendly, bit less waste, less stress, environmentally good. I, th I don't think that's the whole answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think that's the whole answer. I use nylon tip sticks just so it saves wood, because they last longer. And then you play an electric drum cell. <laughs> First of all, now back to your guitar. Um, do you produce them yourselves? Uh, this is made by PV, and it's marketed by FretlessGuitar.com, which I am involved with. Yes, but, yeah, but I, I saw on your website that you uh, made a guitar and sold them to some uh, very known player. You may say yourself if you want to. Yes, we sold one to John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and we converted a '59 Hardtail Strat for him, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guess I, I'm not. I'm not a guitar wonder. I just play CD. That's why I work for the radio. But back to your your uh, your companies, the the bass player, uh, Mark and Bruce. And the uh, inevitable question is going to be asked, boys. So prepare for it if you already have. Yeah. And uh, uh, Kofi Baker, because. Um, you're the sons, and that was hopefully not an accident, it was an accident. of the <laughs> of the gr of, of the great players of the cream, Jack Bruce and uh, 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 Ginger Baker, and I uh, I, w I read your website and you said we are going to be a tribute band for my dad, and you only noticed that five years ago. That's my website. Yeah, it's not my website. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> um, I went to the 2005 reunion. And uh, Malcolm was there too, and I, I thought it was cool because me, me and Malcolm didn't really listen to Queen much. I don't think, did we? No, I didn't it's really. Not really pop. I yeah, mean, we didn't I really. I think. Them a lot, you know. Great so you know, songs. yeah, watching it, and I just thought, you know, and everybody I play shows, everybody's like, "Sunshine of Your Love," "White Worm." I'm like, "Okay, I play the songs." And people said, "Why don't you do a tribute band?" So I thought, "Okay." So under pressure, I did it, and I enjoyed it. It's fun. So there you go. Does it open the door, or does it, is it make it harder for you? To make your mark in the music business. My dad has closed enough doors for me in his uh, <laughs> being to make it hard, but um, I do it just for the fun of it because it's you know it's fun music to play. You get to jam a lot, um, and I like to jam. I hate playing covers where I stuck to a you know a sequence of playing seg segments of you know this is how you play. So with Cream, we just we play our own way. So it's not really a tribute. It's a Cream like band. Um, so yeah, so it's just fun. It's more for the fun. So I don't care if people, you know, 
Give me a hard time. Considering the style Ned is playing on the guitar, you have to be very good musicians because uh, if he is take a side step in his playing, you have to know what to do. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we have not a clue when we get on stage. I thought of everything that they know. Yeah. <laughs> we just follow, it, follow him, and wherever he goes, we try and you know follow him. Uh, don't you improvise a lot? Yes, I like to stretch. Again, that's again that's why the the short set is difficult, but uh, yeah, you know. So short to get to stretch in because we have to put so much in. So squeezing it down so the stretching gets hard, yeah. And let me explain that. We like not only do we like to make songs longer, we like to layer songs over other songs. Our own cover songs go in of others you know, it's it's a it's a tapestry, it's kind of a weaving of like different melodic forms. A tapestry of clams. Yes, a clam tapestry. It's not difficult to um, get an audience because if they like, uh, have to like what you play, maybe it's easier for them if they heard the CD beforehand, yes. then they come to a show and... Uh, it's nothing like a CD at all. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well it depends. I mean, there's enough, of the, um, there's enough of the song present that you can recognize the hooks, but what happens in the middle of the song is kind of where the action is. And that's what we like, that's what I like about a lot of the 60s bands is that on record, Jimmy had fire or purple haze, and that's great. But if you went to see it live, that's when the real magic happened. And, right. you know, so I, I'm a firm believer in, in doing records that are concise, that have songs people can buy, go home, listen to them, enjoy the songs. But then when they go see the band live, the band expands upon that. Yeah, when I was in the studio, it's like, play it like this. No, too busy, like this, like this. But the live, it's like, yeah, you can't say anything to me because I'm there playing it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I think the stretching part is uh, is now interesting again. You see a lot of young bands doing that now again, and uh, even bring the the organ back in the in the band. And then music is interpretation and doing your own thing. I mean, playing it just like the record and playing it the same every night—that's not music. That's copying something. Music should be free. Yeah. Music should be flowing. The '60s and everything was about flowing, and that's why they got all high and everything. So they just you know did that did the thing. Now we don't take drugs, so we just do it naturally now. Bands you will ever meet in your entire life. Oh, I've seen some pretty healthy bands. <laughs> yeah, I did. But I see some fucked up bands also. I guess we all kind of average out in the middle. What are your plans for Holland? Or for Europe in that matter? Because in, in, in America you pretty much made a little mark for yourself. But now, but now in Holland, in Europe, what's your plan of attack? Well, we're going to come back actually uh, near Hoagland and do a show next week. And we're excited to do our full show, you know, play longer and do some of this layering we're talking about. So we'll do that. That's, that's on deck. That's next week. And then we yeah, plan I'm to. Back on the 13th and 14th. Yeah, Kofi's coming back to do a drum. Yes, that's 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then ultimately, what we've, what we've decided to do is we're going to come back in festival season you know towards the back half of april and we're going to come back and we're going to play again and we're going to probably do some form of collaborative take on the music of cream which is going to be very interesting well, we'll probably play a fretless sg and you know do eric clapton as a fretless human being i might even wear an eric clapton mask <laughs> <laughs> i was that's gonna look like <laughs> clapton head, clapton head yeah. so that's our pl our plan is to come back and sort of you know, present more music, you know, because it's for us it's about playing. It's about
that's a good uh, spirit because we are officially a blues program mm -hmm. and everybody we interview when we ask what's the blues for you or what's rock for you and they always say it's in the feeling it's not in the notes it's not in the in the sheets of music it's all what you feel and go from there yeah i yeah it's a feel thing yeah absolutely you know all music is a feel really if you don't feel it if you play from the Never technical seen. side it's not as good it's better seen top of the pops <laughs> yes okay well it can still be feeling in pop music absolutely absolutely yeah soul it's about soul you know i mean as so well if you listen to your songs it's, it's all about it's jazz it's soul it's blues it's rock it, every can you can imagine if you, you you produce a record um lately what took for you to decide now this song is finished and ready to get on tape um, I that lo lo looks difficult for me because you like to stretch you like to work on the sure. on the songs oh yeah 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 well i started off with 20 songs narrowed it down to 11 recorded 11 through one off so we had 10 songs for the album but it is hard to know when to stop sometimes when you're recording you know when to say okay it's done it's more like a painting in that respect you know when do you sign your name but you know i've done five solo records in the last seven years so i'm familiar with when to stop you know the studio and then I stopped I mean I think that was one of the first was that the first time I played with you apart from the um, Lawson thing uh, I think so yeah yeah I think we jammed yeah. with another bass player Steve Lawson um, he they came over to my place in LA and we jammed and we did an album which was more freelance and then I flew to Boise and that was the first time I played with him we I learned the songs in that that day and recorded them and then flew back I think it was all in one day wasn't it it was Easter Sunday yeah it's all on your shoulders, the, the musical songs, though. You have no inspiration of those guys. Well, uh, for this album, you know, for this album, you know, again, I'm, a, I'm an accomplished songwriter. I, I, I've, I've written many songs, so it's a passion of mine. It's free therapy. It's everything that people, it's the reason why people write songs, you know. And um, if, you, if you have a record, you either have to have the time to all get together and jam and co-write which we did not have for this record. We had, again, you know, one day to make it happen. So instead of jamming, we had pre-production and we had, we chose, you know, I chose the songs, we showed up and we did it. But we probably, we definitely the next record will be not like that. It won't be as, uh, you know, yeah, it'll be, it'll be. We'll probably do it in my studio and just jam, right? Jam. <laughs> <laughs> one, one last question over the threads. Is it, uh, um, what's important to play such a guitar? Your hearing, or the feeling, or uh, in the hands? It's everything. It's muscle memory. It's ear. It's uh, your heart. It's uh, you know. It's all that. So you still watching uh, your neck. So I thought it's not only hearing, just also watching uh, too, to get the right notes. Oh, there's visuals. Of course. <laughs> 